So, after I was here last week, I had a conversation with my mother, who's uh, 70 years old this year. And if I got that wrong, then I'll have to apologize to my mom for that later. But 70 years ago, my mom was born in a teeny, tiny, rinky-dink, not of nowhere spot in the map town called Allwine, Iowa. She was born to a woman who had been committed to an asylum. We don't have those anymore. But she had been committed to an asylum. She was out on a furlough from the asylum when her husband got her pregnant. And she ended up back in the asylum. And then to compound that, she was released from the asylum and gave birth to my mother. Two years later, my mother, well not two years later, two years later my mother was adopted from a little orphanage in Davenport, Iowa. But I want you ladies to think about this. 70 years ago, had my mother been conceived at a time when abortion was legal, she wouldn't be here. But because adoption was the preferred method of dealing with children who were conceived at a time that the parents felt was not convenient, she was adopted. And not only was my mother adopted, her biological brother was adopted. Not only was my mother's biological brother adopted, but my mother had three other children in her family who were biological brothers and sisters, who then in turn were adopted. They were adopted by my grandparents. And those two dear, godly, loving, caring people adopted five children Five children. Fuck you all. That's a horrible mouth you have, ma'am. You should yes, repent. I do. Very proud of them. Equal vote. Ma'am, is abortion murder? There, there are people who have near Why are you flipping me off? Are you hating me? There are people who have near death experiences. See, that's the support you get is people who 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 don't who don't really cherish the freedom of speech. They don't cherish people who stand up for what they believe in. But anyway, back to my story. Two people in a small little community in, in West Central Iowa called Charter Oak adopted five children that were not their own. And they raised them in a home as their own. That is the very epitome of love. That is the very epitome of of concern and compassion. This is not compassionate what you're doing. Compassion, young lady, would be to help these women find adoptive parents. And as that wicked woman who came by and swore at us just now and a little bit ago, the one who walked by and told us there's all these children waiting to be adopted and there's all these children in foster care, the concern isn't whether or not they're waiting to be adopted. The concern isn't whether or not they're in foster care. The concern is the United States has made abortion easier than adoption. Murder, murder is now okay. Adoption has become nearly a crime based on the fact that it's so hard to do. Just think about that. This is easier than a couple who, in the United States who wants to adopt a child from the United States has to spend vast fortunes of money to adopt children while you can just come in here and have the state pay for your abortion. And you're supporting that. You're supporting that. That's absolutely horrible. Think about every single child who's born. Let's think about every single child that was born prior to Roe v. Wade. Think about every single one of those if they had been in a family where it was inconvenient for them to be born. Think about what would have happened and what our society would look like today if all of those kids were gone. And then I want you to think about what's happening in our culture today. We have 
groups marching around holding up black power signs and Black Lives Matter and they're all chanting about how much Black Lives Matter but do you know the number one victim of abortion in the United States are black children? Black children. Now I would imagine that all of you would be opposed to an unarmed black man being shot by police for absolutely no reason. But yet you stand here and you support a business that will murder an unarmed black child for doing nothing wrong other than being conceived by someone who wanted a convenient life. See, that's the very epitome of evil and wickedness. But it's not an evil or a wickedness that cannot be overcome. It's an evil and wickedness that was paid for on the cross and you can be forgiven for if you would repent and believe the gospel. And maybe you're not familiar with the gospel. I know at least you young lady have heard it. The rest of you have probably heard it today, but maybe you're not familiar with it. In John 3 verse 16, Christ speaking to Nicodemus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should have everlasting life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses, verse uh, 21, God speaking through the Apostle Paul says that for he God made him Christ who knew no sin to become the very on our part so that we could become the very righteousness of God that is the gospel Jesus Christ in agreement with God the Father went to the cross bore our sin died in shame died naked and alone, beaten beyond recognition, did not utter a single word of protest, did not plead his innocence, did not plead for his life to be spared, did not condemn a single one of the people who were crucifying him, but instead said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And so I would ask you to think about this. You know what you're doing here today is wrong. That's why you won't look at me. That's why you're wearing those sunglasses on an overcrowded or overcast day when it's cloudy. You're wearing those so you don't have to make eye contact with me. You're wearing those sunglasses so that you don't have to actually have your eyes be seen. Many philosophers and poets have said that don't do that. The eyes reflect the innermost being. Scripture refers to that. That's why you don't want us to see your eyes. That's why you won't look at us. That's why the only glances you offer our way are to make sure that we're not crossing the sacred protected line of the Emma Goldman Clinic. But you know you're wrong. Yet Jesus still paid for that. And you can know that it was paid for if you would but repent and believe. You've heard the gospel numerous times today. And it's never too late as long as you're drawing breath, the very breath that God gave you. But if you die without Christ, if you die in unrepentant sin, if you die not repenting of being complicit to the murder of unborn children, there is no forgiveness for you to be had. And that's not said in a mean-spirited, hateful way. We're just pleading with you to repent and believe.